Much love and respect. Pura vida, mi gente. Thanks for tuning in once again. A quick little video, guys. We're going to go over some information we've gone over before. I thought it deserved its own video. A very incredible find here. want to give a big shout out before I begin the video to uh, the archivist with Analog. As you guys can see here, this is his Twitter page where you can find many many interesting newspaper articles and other related things when it comes to ancient history ancient america and many other uh, great historical reports images and information and he also has a youtube channel right here it's called the archivist with analog as well as you see here you guys can go make sure to subscribe some great videos on all the findings he's been doing uh, on his Twitter page with the newspaper articles. He's been doing a great job. Make sure to subscribe and like. We're gonna get into two of those articles. I came across them on his Twitter page and had put them in one of my uh, videos in my series, Amazing Newspaper Reports. They don't want you to see. Make sure to check out that whole series with me and the archivist with Analog. Uh, collaborate together to bring that great information to you guys. So respect to the archivist with Analog. Thanks for your hard work. So let's go ahead and get started with these uh, two incredible newspaper articles telling us what they found in Mississippi. All right, all right, moving on. <laughs> it says here, the Great Wall of China. I mean, the Great Wall of Tartaria. I mean, the Great Wall of Mississippi. <laughs> it says here, Mississippi's Great Wall. An interesting prehistoric work, the origin of which is a mystery. One of the scientific puzzles of the state of Mississippi is the Brandywine Stone Wall. It has long been a problem that is yet unsolved. Some time ago, Mr. Thomas Watson of Hasselhurst sent Governor Longino a pencil drawing of an immense pile of stones in the southeastern portion of Claiborne County suggesting that the stone might be utilized in building the new capital. In a letter which accompanied the drawing, Mr. Watson stated that these stones piled high on each other cover an area four miles square. Each stone is six feet long, three feet wide, and two feet thick, and they are joined together with an excellent quality of cement. No man knows how they came there. They may have been there for thousands of years. The builders the Jackson News thinks were some prehistoric race. It could not be otherwise. This structure is supposed to be a continuation of the great Chinese wall. Listen, this is supposed to be a what? Continuation of the Great Wall of China? All the way in Mississippi? Which seems to begin below Raymond in the southern part of Hines County and which is traceable through Copaya. All right, this is how long this wall is. Listen up. It is broad enough to accommodate two or three wagons abreast and is one of the wonders of the world. One of the wonders of the world. Mention of this remarkable exhibit, says the Hasselhurst Courier, has elicited no little comment. In fact, has brought a letter to Mr. Watson from the warden of the United States 
Penitentiary at Lavenworth, Kansas, and also a letter to Dr. T.B. Birdsong from another distinguished source. It being known that the latter some years ago investigated the matter. Mr. Watson, however, says the courier has given the subject more patient thought and gone over the ground more thoroughly than anyone else, and to him, the courier is indebted for the following facts. He calls it the Brandywine Stone Wall and says this wonderful and massive structure or parts of structure of masonry done in stone which have withstood the ravages of time for perhaps many thousands of years, many thousands of years, listen, still stand an enduring relic of a prehistoric civilization and knowledge of the art of building, not inferior in many respects to the present day. These stone buildings lie for the most part buried in the earth in the southeastern portion of Claiborne County and lying against the Copiah County line on the slopes overlooking the valley of the Brandywine Creek from the west side. Wow, a wall, a long, thick, megalithic wall buried in Mississippi. They're saying it connects to the Great Wall of China. I don't know how they know that, but very interesting report here. As you guys can see, Mississippi's Great Wall. Again, continuing, it says here, the Mound Builders, Wisconsin, 1875. The Great Wall of Mississippi, Brandywine continued. The bottom never found. Large forest trees, several hundred years old, growing on top. 400 square miles. Do so you understand what he just said? They found an archaeological wall. And they found trees growing on top of that wall. Very large trees, meaning that wall is very ancient. Let's get to the report. It says here, the mound builders. Traces of their work in Mississippi. Remarkable prehistoric discovery. Professor James R. Gage of Washington City, an eminent geologist and mineralogist who has recently been engaged in making extensive explorations regarding the works of the ancient mound builders, reports the discovery of a very remarkable wall in Claiborne County, 18 miles east of Port Gibson, Mississippi. The discovery has been incidentally mentioned in several papers within the course of a few days but they do not appear to have realized a tithe of its antiquarian and archaeological interest and importance. We condemn the particulars of the discovery from the professor's statement in the Washington Republican. It appears that blocks of the stone have been taken by the farmers for building purposes for many years, and it has formed a general quarry for furnishing large blocks of stone. So they were finding this megalithic wall, these stones, and they were using it to build other things. They weren't reporting it. But the farmers have never, it seems, been aware of the antiquarian importance of this wall, which is claimed to be cuval or anterior to that of Hadrian's famous wall in England. Professor Gage employed laborers and uncovered a portion of the wall 20 feet in width and 175 feet in length. But on removing the soil here and there, he traced it 600 feet. The workmen uncovered the wall to a depth of 6 feet. But lower than this, the excavations were not continued. Large forest trees of pine and oak, several hundred years old, are grown on top of the wall. Again, large forest trees of pine and oak, it's very old trees, right? Several hundred years old are grown on top of the wall. How old is this wall then? The blocks are limestone and belong to the tertiary formation. They were hewn out of this formation and are 3 feet in length, 20 inches in width, and 22 inches in thickness. One of these blocks has been shipped to Philadelphia for the centennial. Oh, so they sent one of these stones to their world fairs? The wall from which it was taken forms two sides of a rectangular, one part running east and west and the other north and south. The excavations were made near the angle. Three miles due south from this point, another portion of the wall reappears on the banks of Bayou Pierce, owing to the washing out of the creek, making it a large exposure. And it is therefore judged that this is a continuation of the ancient wall. The wall was built on the side of a ridge overlooking a swamp, which in ancient times was evidently the bed of a lake. 
and the inference is that the wall was erected by the ancient occupants as a barrier against an enemy, or possibly as an ancient levy or dike erected for the protection of the inhabitants against the encroachments of the lake or the waters of the Mississippi. Are you guys listening to this history that we were never taught from other evidences of the wide extent of this wall as described by Professor Gage? It appears that it included a large area of land covering pr probably 400 square miles. All right, this is big and extending to the Mississippi River, the locality where the wall exists in the neighborhood of the Natchez Indians. All right, the Natchez, who were found in the state of considerable civilization when they first visited by the French. And these remains, it is conjectured by Professor Gage, had some connection with the occupation by the warlike ancestors of this interesting and famous tribe. All right, you guys hear this? They didn't teach us none of this in school. They don't even bring it up at all. It didn't fit their history. Remember, manifest destiny. If it's considered pre-Columbian, it wasn't considered historic. It was savage. <laughs>